This conference will now be recorded. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sure, Ojit, but your voice is very low. My voice is very low. Just like to... Hello. Yeah. Still very low, right? Think. Now okay, it's clear. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Let's... Uh, so how was your, like... Uh, uh, you know, how was your day? How was the week, right? It's good. So now, and yours? like you, uh, it was a bit hectic, but okay, managing with the new clients and also that is always get challenging. Yeah, work so, is always there. Yeah, that is you know, the hiccups and everything you expect as a part of the project plan. Yeah. And uh, how about and mostly you you have off on Saturday and Sunday, right? Yeah. Great, great. And uh, just uh, Rashmi, before we get up uh, to the session, mostly what we will be trying to get an understanding, right? Uh, you are comfortable in uh, in Python, so what yes. we will be doing, we will be we will be trying to get some uh, you know real time examples like how how the retail or the CPG world world uh, works, what kind of problems that we see in a uh, in in, in pertains to it, it can be any enough to be e commerce, be it uh, uh, be it retail or CPG, so that it first it gives you the first level of understanding. Because the biggest challenge, what I've seen, uh, I think you are on the development side, right? Devel yeah. Developer kind of a role right now, yeah, yeah, I'm a technical lead here, so. right. So the, the one of the challenge because some of the guys also said like you know how, if we need to switch to analytics so how we can do that because but the, the basic thing that uh, always I suggest here is your mindset needs to be changed in terms of when you are doing typically when you are typically doing a kind of an you know uh, a role which is uh, on the development side you will be very good in tools you will be very good in creating APIs uh, with yeah. drop downs and things are happening right but the uh, challenge what I've seen because uh, we have a development team here as well as the organization where I'm working. So basically the analytics bucket lies with us, but I think when it comes to the packaging and the product, uh, production is part of it. So we, uh, we uh, it's basically the developers who take it forward in terms of designing the part. The challenge what I've seen on that, like uh, even like, you know, you create something or other tool base, but you give it to client. So they don't try, they don't, connect what will be the utility of that tool so that is a that is a challenge which i've seen is, is basically because of the fact right when you move in when you look at the analytics world um the client actually are looking for some specific thing so even we give them a tool or even if, uh, you know create a product how you can leverage how what kind of questions that they are trying to understand so if we try to focus on those areas it means that we need to understand the business very well so the first part yeah. of it like it will be like un the business understanding how it happened the second part is on the approach so mostly uh, you know the approach is pertaining to uh, how different like uh, if a, a different business problem will have some 
different solutions and in those solutions there will be a mix of statistical techniques there will be machine learning that can be adopted so machine learning is something that has happened that have taken uh, over like around last three to four years and now the scale is going up but every business problem is not a machine learning problem there even you do a data summarization or a data extraction and you create those insights so basically the first part of an uh, getting into the uh, analyst world is you have to be very good in finding out a deep dive what is happening in the business why there is uh, even something is working well if something is and some areas where you don't see it's not working well so what are the key drivers for that so that will give your mindset from a development to a problem kind of an identification deep diving getting more or uh, more into a solution mode so that will always help so today what probably what we will be uh touch the thing is i'm going to show you the data that we had uh what i'm was thinking from the data side of it right i have the transactional data the product data i think with the uh, with the joining and data summarization you will be good so yeah. what i can do is i will share the data set with you i will give what we are trying to do because instead of rather you know i'll be code like you know merging the data and you know data summarization so probably what we can do we can discuss this is what we want to do probably yes. you take the data and you do some kind of uh, like obviously data merging data summarization everything will be there and if we can make it something like you know you create a function out of it and uh, you uh, and basically from the function you're pulling some kpis and let's spend some time because this is something let's see that in the next class uh probably tomorrow will be too early for you might be so might be in the next saturday whatever you can manage by tomorrow that will be fine or we'll go to the next saturday yeah. as well so let, uh, let's I will, I will just try to understand your uh you know uh, how you are doing the co uh, the coding side of your part in the python so probably will get an understanding how much time i need to spend there or basically i want to take you through more on the uh real-time business world how it happens yeah right? like yeah i have i want the more focus on the business understanding because coding is something if i can do it on my own also if i know what needs to be done i can find out a way like how it can be done but like that and un business understanding and what is the requirement that is the major thing i want to know that the thought process like how the things has to be done like that is the main requirement from my side right 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 so what we will do is and i will show you the data set of a trend and what we what we are aiming to do probably you know in the next class uh if you could show me what you pull out and definitely we can discuss on that part and then we will uh, go with the coding part of it right this is what we are getting so probably yes even a good hands-on on excel will be important here for you so you're good in excel or have you did uh, okay so right, that is also one of the requirement uh Oh, yeah, okay. so basically what happens is like when you create a dashboard and everything right there. So one of the component is also an Excel because a lot of things do happen in Excel. And second, like you have something like Power BI Tableau. So depending on the organization who does on the, you know, go over the visualization. Okay. Uh, so let me, uh, let me spend some time in terms of uh, going to the basic of the things. So basically there will be some static uh component and also what we will be doing is uh we will uh, try to form a business case right and i would just yes. want to understand like how you think of uh of that, you know that as a business problem what kind of solution that it triggers to your mind right it will create the business understanding well then what what we will be intending is like uh we'll see some of the little parts and i have some materials that which i'm going to uh ebooks which i'm going to forward to you so which will give you like uh why we need always like if we start with basics like mean median mode uh the standard deviation covariance what all this uh, terminology means what does it, it talks about so it's important to understand yeah. because a lot of these problems to be statistically explained as well right okay yeah yeah it would be really great if you can share some statistical material with me so that yeah, i can I go through it. yeah i have just you know i have all those things i have you know on the statistical that i thought of like that will be uh good help for you to go through it um 
Yeah. Let me, let me share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Probably this guy is need to. I've raved the request for sharing my screen. I'm not sure if these guys are there or not. Probably I need to give them a call to um, just give me a minute. I think I need to give him a call to make me the presenter there. Yeah, sure. So, can you see, uh, see my screen here right now? Yes, I can see the screen. Perfect. I will take a quick an example and we will go because this uh, this document has got, you know, covers most of the business problem that we could think of and definitely there will be a few more slides that we will be talking. Uh, let me start with something like this. Uh, yeah. So think for an example like let's uh, spend some time on the on framing a business uh, you know business question and objective and from there we will drill down uh, supposedly you think of a um, uh, retailer like a e retailer like you know the big basket right so okay. they are encountering a uh, quite a you know severe sales loss in the market and they want to come up uh, like they want to first understand uh, where we are going wrong in the business right second point is like uh, which are the areas like how, which areas we should focus what kind of strategies we should have in order to you know uh, resurrect the current scenario so these are basically uh, these are the basically the asked that we see from a client and using this uh, you know how you can think of like you know say this is a problem for you right and you have the data say for around past uh, two three four years uh, you have got the data right how you think like as in as in like when you move to uh, like as an analyst or as someone who providing the solution or as a consulting so they could think of this business problem and uh, frame it into some kind of an okay probably this we should start from here then we will go here so this flow is very important uh, in terms of when you when you, when you think of the analytics so okay. you take your time you think of because i think we let's spend some more uh, you know time in understanding these kind of cases we will be you know defining or discussing whatever we have in the course curriculum whatever problems we have and basically from the business context purpose we will try to understand this problem and then we will get down to the technical side of it so technical will be coming over the time, but uh, I think uh, these 
context will be very important. Yes. You can take uh, two, three minutes to think of, uh, you know, what can be the starting point, and uh, then, uh, then I can add on to it. Yeah, like suppose if I have the data, the, the what comes in my mind, like I'll let mm -hmm. you know. Suppose I yeah, have absolutely. this, because I'm right. I'm bugged on, so I'm just right. like. And suppose I when I get the data, I'll first see the like monthly, what is the monthly and yearly, what is the trend, like how the and mother, like what is the your spends and transactions are going up and down. Like what are the months where the transactions are going very down and where the transactions are high? I'll just figure it out those months where where the transactions are very less. And then I'll see the for which brands and like things like which are the things that are going very down and then I'll try to compare it with like previous months and the and for two three months in like upcoming months and previous months like how it was going down like why the people have been is something they have moved to some other product or people have start stopped coming to these markets like this is how Right. Uh, you uh, you started with the, in in the right note, right? Uh, in terms of uh, if someone says like I need to see the overall high level numbers, right? Because yeah. your first quantum will start from where uh, where I am going wrong or right. That will basically you start with an overall number, right? In overall yeah. business, I am uh, we are going wrong, we are going right. And this is where it comes to an overall trend. In in terms of the overall, say if I say that my sales has declined by say uh, the 20 million, right? Yeah. From 20 million, I will say it can be some like five percent of your sales, right? So you have to yeah. quantify that. 20 million will be the absolute figure, and then you will say that okay, um, uh, I lost around. Uh, that is actually five percent. In comparison to what we uh, what we have what did earlier, right? So all those things is, is a high level number for you. So now from this, if you need to drill down, right? Because next question will be like, it is not it's something is going to uh, is happening with everyone, right? This is not yeah. a typically a problem where where you will see that everywhere that there is there is the same problem. So what you intend or what we need to do from there is. Uh, we have to then, uh, you know, then come down and see which part, which geography, because if big basket is located everywhere, right? So probably yeah. the next part, uh, next question will be, they will definitely not have the sales uh, coming from all part of the world, right? So yes. definitely it will be not all, uh, you have to now, because it's always be called a top down approach. You, you start from a broader set, now you have to close it down and uh, you know uh, it's basically uh, you have to restrict it to the uh, the most uh, relevant area which you need to focus so from there what we will be doing is we will try to uh, see which geographies you seeing the most impact from the geography sections then you have to come down like if i talk about now you have like if you talk about a big basket Definitely, there will be a lot of uh, categories. There are a lot of products they are into, right? So what we need to understand is like how we can select, uh, understand of which categories you are seeing the most decline. So think of this as an example, right? I understand this is the total sales loss. I am drilling down. I'm drilling down into the different parts of the India. Within the India, I'm identifying because typically this is a big basket. So you expect like wherever you have a digital presence like uh, uh, probably the Bangalore then the NCR region Delhi NCR uh, then some parts uh, yeah, Mumbai then Hyderabad then Chennai so this kind of the metro cities will be dominating in terms of the sales contribution and you you already uh, will have an understanding right okay here we expect the major chunk of the sales to go down right yeah uh, from there, now I'm just giving you the pointers. Now from there, how you can frame it? Uh, 
yeah like so now uh, yeah this is good like i'll see like from which geography the sale has decreased very low and i'll compare it on the geography level now on comparing the geography level i'll see like suppose in mumbai the sale has gone very down now i i'll see in mumbai i'll look i have a look at the stores like in which area of the stores the sale is going down and in which products the sale is going down now i'll understand like in mumbai suppose in navy mumbai the store located in navy mumbai is going very down as compared to the urban mumbai they are the sale right. is up now i know the which area it is going down now i'll see like on which brands the sale is going down there may be some brands that are going very down some groceries yeah. there may be some so, groceries that are okay right. so what now, if once you identify the you know the region level then it's important yeah. you drill down at a category level right category level is basically yeah. what we call when you talk about say if you if you open like they will have vegetables they will have fruits uh yeah. they will have so the vegetable or the fruits or vegetables that can be the higher level they are saying uh they can say it like a produce or kind of one thing because typically yeah. in retail they call it produce why because this is something you get fresh from the farm so between yeah. that you see that they will divide into uh fruits and vegetables right now between yeah. fruits you will see there will be a differentiation on a regular fruit uh it can be seasonal fruits it can be exotic fruits and i think this is a tree and there can be some specialized in terms of uh, exotic will all capture the uh, mm -hmm. like uh, kiwis the berries like this kind of uh, category which is more towards uh, you know more towards uh, kind of an uh, premium kind of an customers so that that is what you you have to uh, come up with right yeah so now once you understand because these are called a product hierarchy because every or uh, wherever you know the wherever you see if it's an in store like if you talk about typically a big bazaar they will have their own kind of something there yeah. you will see the pre packed food like in even in the fruits you are buying there can be cases like it, 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 it you can have a pack of six apples right so yeah. even in the apple category if, if i talk about there will be a different variety of apples same goes with the mango right so there can be some the, these are called the typically the product level information or it can be a one level up so if i talk about uh, apples between apples they can have some uh, imported apples and they can have a section of the regular kind of an apple stocks right or apples which is coming from nagpur so there they can have a different differentiation in that particular apple as a, as a category so apple will be we call it a sub category right if you go yeah. up it will be uh, fruit will be your category so everywhere you will see that there will be some kind of a uh, product hierarchy that that will exist right that will yeah. always allow you to find out okay within this section or within this fruit category i am seeing the most decline is coming from the mango say for an example right yeah. now you know that okay in this geography you are seeing uh, seeing this as a problem right next from the uh, from the regional perspective when you are going down to the category level you you get an uh, you get an understanding like here we are seeing majority of the problem it can happen that what if if a case that if you see there is a severe decline in most of the categories so what you can resonate with that Like if there is a yeah. suppose there is yeah. a decline. Yeah, right. One thing. Yeah. So if you see most of the categories. Yeah, please say it, Sulajit. Yeah. If you see in Mumbai, you see that most of the categories you are seeing a decline, right? So yeah. this is what it is happening. So what? what what will be the inference from your end so i'll see like most of the categories if i see decline i'll have is there must be some grocery shop fresh that is giving some fruits better rate than ours or either our fruit quality is not good we have to have a look in those things 
right absolutely so basically what you do is you're spot on on here so if you see that uh, if it is a generic trend that you are losing across set of categories it means that you are not doing business as a whole right so yeah typically there are few metrics that we are going to talk about uh, which are important to understand the business how it is going so i have few things here so basically what i you can see the excels right here yeah uh, yes. so these are all what what i'm aiming that you know you will be giving it a shot so i will be telling you how to do it right you have the data set uh, i think let's i think let you, you can start off like okay thinking on that line how we can utilize the data set and uh, because everything is because based on this data we can uh, we will be deriving this part of it so the first part always what we are going to uh, concentrate is more around how we can uh, uh, how we can you know uh, do a proper business health check it is called like it is very important to uh, uh, to understand how the overall business dynamics is going that is what we are discussing right so this part will be very important and now from the data how you come up with this insights so that will be important to see so i had uh, some of these data which i have pulled and you know presented in excel i will do i will definitely share that but i'm going to show you first this is what we need to do probably uh, once you pull the data you try to get in that form so we can discuss on that so typically uh, let me see that if i can use uh, uh, i need to uh, I believe get the pen yeah Very difficult to manage all drawings. I think we have only the pen to draw. Okay, cool. So basically, if you think we have total sales, right? These sales mm -hmm. is further can be decomposed into two parts, right? One. how we can understand like uh, say if i talk about spend per customer like i am mentioning it at spc right so okay. you have spend per customer you have number of customers if i say it uh, is this cuff so i hope you can make it out it difficult to actually you know draw in the mouse uh, so basically what we are saying supposedly i you know that i have around say 50000 customers right 50k customers so these 50k customers at an average what we can say that how much they are spending right so if i know they are spending 200 rupees right then my total sales will become how much 50k into 200 right yes so this is all kind of a derived so my sales can be furthered so this is called a decomposition of the key so any business you will see always you will have kpi kpi is called a key performance indicator so okay. what are the major kpis that is the or what are the major metrics so metrics or kpi is something that every of the business will have some kind of a measures that will tell us where we are going wrong or right if i see that um, we know that our sales is going down so we know that our this is where we are actually missing but is it because my spend per customer has gone down or is it because my total quantum of customers has gone down right so if it is a problem at a customer level then it means that you are unable to satisfy customer needs right the yeah. second side if i see that okay the customers average spend they are doing right it means the problem here or if the other side the customers are there but they are not spending much with you say this is an example right i am seeing so whenever if you if i go oh uh, let me scroll let, let me show you the, this part of it mm, here what what i have done was Based on a data set we had, uh, like uh, this is a department typically it was a US retailer. Uh, we have a quarter one sales and quarter two sales, right? It, it, it is, I think it's all in dollar. And now you can report the growth, right? So that is fourteen point. Just I think this will be more clearer. So 
supposedly uh, for produce we are talking about in a quarter one we have 4613 quarter two we had this amount of sales you see the difference between the sales and this is a percentage right so they're trying to understand what is the percentage growth in the produce that we had so if this is a growth it can be related like i have more customers buying into that or it's basically customers are spending more so this is what we mean by growth here the same thing i have uh, yes so if you see this quarter one we had this count of customers this is the total uh, number of baskets of visit i'm going to tell so it'll, it'll get more clear total sales this pen per customer is nothing but when you dividing the sales by number of customers. Yes. So, uh, uh, and pen per basket is I'm uh, uh, basket I'm going to come and we have frequency of purchase. So uh, I'm going to derive that for you. So, but this is how these metrics are getting derived. So let me go back to that Excel we were discussing and. Uh, um okay just a sec where we were i was trying to get mm, just give me a minute how this need on blank excel yeah okay cool so over here what happens is like you know you are actually splitting into spend per customer and customer so now your spend per customer means how much at an average customer is spending right so there is always a concept that is called a repeat purchase, right? So yeah. if you hear of the fact that everyone, uh, every of the uh, is basically, you know, uh, be it a, be it a uh, e-commerce uh, or be it a in-store kind of um, like a uh, retail media or any 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 shopping uh, cards you talk about, they always want like my customer should repeatedly come. So it's always said like you, you will be hearing the concept of loyalty, right? So yeah. loyalty is means like how many times like what is my engagement frequently coming into the store or more frequently buying into the uh, market? Uh, 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 Shruddit, your voice is breaking. I was holding the microphone, but yeah, I can hear Hello. you. Hear me now, or oh, I believe my hello. Yeah, please see. Hello. Actually, I thought my audio. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me now? Can Hello? you hear me? Uh, can you? Yeah. 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 I think back because I think there was some uh, problem with the audio device that suddenly it got uh, disconnected. Yeah. So now, if you could understand, this spend per customer will be dependent on how much I am for every visit, right? So there is a scum concept that we will be calling as spend per visit, right? SPV. Yeah. The second part will be the frequency of purchase, FOP. So what is the frequency of purchase? Let's let's move focus on that uh, because every of these metrics will have uh, more relevance to the business and it's a part of our deep dive exercise. So now if we know that, uh, you know, uh, if I see there is a decline in spend per customer, say these coming out to be minus 3%, right? So what we are trying to understand is, though my customer uh, here, you may not see a 0% or maybe what you, what you are seeing, like there's a no net change. So the change we are talking, it can be with respect to this year versus last year. Like you take entire this year 52 weeks and you to plot entire this year uh, last year 52 weeks. It can be one way. It can be you are doing quarter one this year versus quarter one last year. So you are taking the same time frame. So uh, can you tell me one reason? Like if I do a quarter two versus quarter one 
and I get some kind of an like a sales increase or decrease, right? Will that be right for the business? Quarter two versus quarter one of the same year, what? correct? No? Yes. Like if we are doing quarter two versus quarter one, so I can see that like a trend in which quarter whether it's decreasing or increasing how the sales is going on will like. that, yeah you can definitely look into it but will that be a very good in order to assess your business scenario no like you have to do that comparison with previous quarter, like how the sale was in previous quarter with this, like, in, and how is it working in this quarter? That would be more like. Yeah, the point that is, like, if you do a this year versus last year, right? Versus, like, if I do a quarter one versus quarter two, it can be seasonality, right? If you see that, if you see the trend across the 52 weeks, right? you will see there will be a seasonality that will be coming into the picture. So in yes. that context, uh, if it is a high summer, your summer, you know, summer uh, or uh, summer kind of things will always be picking up the sales. Again, if that is a festival time, be it in the, in, in the time of Diwali, be it in a time of, uh, say in Mumbai, if you see in Ganesh Chaturthi, so definitely in those uh, parts, uh, for every state, it will be quite different in terms of the festival uh in terms of the seasonality so always those fluctuations will be there so in case when we are trying to report we try to report based on uh supposedly quarter one versus uh, quarter one last year to get a better measure right so yeah. this is something we try to do on that yeah so Now, this is basically, uh, you know, once we understand, okay, here we, the spend per customer is minus 3%. So now spend per visit and frequency per purchase is like, how many times I have ordered in the in that quarter or how many times I have visited the store uh, uh, during that time frame in 52 weeks, say. But typically, if you think that when you are shopping in a big bazaar or any of the big basket, you will have some uh, your sleep or your sleep will look something like this. Mm. You have a in case if you can't hear me, just let me know because I'm trying to you know lower the microphone a bit. Sometimes go no, sometimes breaks up. Uh, because you know my headphone is not getting connected here yeah you have a transaction id right transaction id or we you can say it's a, it's a basket id for you the basket will be more easy to understand so you have a basket id here so now supposedly i know you are a customer and uh, typically in all e retailer you will have you will have a customer id right so they will create a customer id for you and now I know this person this date time. So date time is also very important. Date time will typically mean that you will have the date and you will also have the time component attached attached to it. Uh, then then we will go and we will have the product level information, right? Product code. You have the quantity you have bought mostly this all we will be there and if i scroll a bit here you will have the unit sales you will have the discount and you will have the total sales right so this is how Typically, when you shop, you will have this. And if you are visiting to any of the, say, uh, um, say any uh, retail outlet, they will have a store ID, right? Either because you need to understand from which store you are buying as well. So there will be a store code 
that can be at the top uh, if generally uh, it can be in the recipe but whenever they are producing the final slip that will be pretty much there so you're getting me right rashmi or any yeah. any, any doubt yes. no no i'm getting it so typically say uh, it's my 001 is my basket id uh, sorry so it should be 001 you cannot say for customer c1 right uh, at some date time say 24th may 24th May 19, um, 19, and you will have like uh, 11, 15, 00. This is my dead time hour, right? So typically, this will be my dead time hour we will have, and then you will have some kind of a product code like P001. This can be quantity you are buying one, say this may be say 50 rupees. Uh, discount you get maybe five rupees or percentage, whatever it can be. The total sales you have given that will be 45, right? So, yeah. typically, basket ID will be a unique identifier if you are if this customer C1 is buying your dead time will be the same. So, supposedly, you got cold drinks, you got chips, you got um. Uh, uh, say uh, fresh vegetables you got dairy products so everything will be a la part like you are buying food quantity here it is 78 you haven't got any discounts it will be zero and here it will be a tt 160 so 156 right so basically this will be the typically you see that uh, uh, this is something that it will be near transactional so for the full code, what I am mentioning, like even if you go to a big buzzer, so every of the score will have this unique identifier, and in the store table, so they will have like which city it is located, who the store manager, what is the store size, uh, basically when the store has opened. So these set of information always allow you to overlay and see uh, to create insights in terms of. When we are seeing the major metrics, so what, what I'm going to come to this, like these, these are all the derived metrics from it, which allow us to identify the root cause. So if if we know that particularly in this in this city there is a major problem, so that will come from the store code. Even if you uh, need to an understanding the stores which have opened in the last one year, there you are not doing good, good, right? That is also an insight. So those set of attribute or variables is going to help you. To pull insights according to that. Now, if I talk about uh, supposedly uh, in a basket five uh, for the same customer C1, and supposedly he is shopping, I'm putting a post at 25, 5, uh, 19 in around 9 a.m. in the morning, right? So this is a second visit where he might have bought some different product or it can be an instant a customer is repeatedly buying into a supposedly someone uh, who goes into nearby convenience store in terms of uh, getting the breakfast needs like uh, someone buying into the bread, someone buying into milk uh, and uh, and daily like you know the daily requirement stuff. So basically this will be a repeated product so what we mean by repeat purchase in terms of a product level is how repeatedly you are buying into that category i'm going to come to the product hierarchy so that will give you more clearer view so same set of information is get repeated now how many times this customer has have an unique visit so you have to do a count distinct basket id right if someone tells you like how many uh, times this customer has shopped so for c1 uh, say if i if i get it at this level c1 c2 c3 these are my customer ids i want to calculate the number of times they are visited so it can be uh, 12 it can be 34 it can be 5 uh, sorry 34 it can be 5 right so what we are talking about this is the count of their visits. So this is nothing but the end distinct visit that you use, right? If you um, if you use five spot, you will use the, you will have the count distinct part of it. So yes. here you will get the count distinct. You will be doing a group by at a customer level. So customer this level. will give you a, yeah. 
so customer uh, how many times the customer have visited and if we try to get the total sales he has got so here what we will be doing is uh, basically um, you will you will group by customer id count distinct uh, basket uh, basket id and sum of total sales using the aggregate function right so this will give you a total sales coming from customer c1 and a total visit someone is doing right this is something okay. that you can give it a first shot right so from the data we have how i'm going to forward you the data set uh, how we can you know uh, how we can roll up and get a count distinct visit and sum of sales of the customer so here the suspense per visit what we are talking about if you see this is a sales and this is a visit say this uh, sales is uh, basically um, 3500 right uh, for these it's maybe closer to 7800 and for these is basically closer to uh, 683 right this is a total sales so the spend per visit what we mean is nothing but you have to divide the sales and the visits here right so at an average you know this is the uh, spend per visit that we are getting 291 220 and 136 right this spend per visit is nothing but this but what we say uh, you know when we try to roll it up like uh, from spend per customer spend but here you you talk about the total count of customer right so this will always tell us in terms of the metrics um, <coughs> in terms of the metrics like if my spend per visit is going down so it means the customer is not spending uh, you know not spending as much they are doing and frequency of purchase it will be meaning like customers are not frequent you know they, their visits have gone down so the visits that we are talking about here it has gone down right so we can understand the basic business problem from there so what we need to do like from frequency of purchase like if you know the frequency of purchase so definitely we have to uh, the main strategy will be around how we can increase how we can win uh, it's called a win back strategy so win back strategy talks about more from the perspective of how what kind of you know offers we can create for the customer in order to uh, improve the customer retention so then we know if i see the customers are leaving the business right i see that frequency of purchase is going down so these two have a high degree of correlation right correlation means the customers is dropping it means they have lapsed so if always you in the measure uh, when you look into it they will say that how we can identify which customer is going to lapse so we have a and if in modeling exercise uh, later in the course, we'll be doing a predictive model. So here you know that customer has already declined. So that is the issue. Also, the frequency of purchase is going down. It means that customer is not returning back to your store more frequently or not buying with you more frequently. That means the problem lies somewhere. The customer might be switching to, to a competitor, or it can be a case that they are no longer liking your product as a whole or uh, there can be some issues pertaining to the quality right so these are the main things that you can think of while the spend per visit is a component of what if you see inflation right so supposedly there will be two things like i talk about price per unit why the price per unit for the same price some for the same product which i used to buy it might happen that your spend per visit goes on increasing right you see a very positive coefficient there like my spend per visit going at plus one percent or two percent it does not necessarily mean that customers are buying more of unit or more of quantity or more of categories with you ideally if that if that is the case every retailer or every business will be very happy to have that kind of scenario but it does not go in that direction it's basically there can be a price per unit supposedly uh, if the inflation will always be one of the factor which will drive your uh, let me scroll down Yeah. 
so inflation will always be the uh, always be the factor for us like if i talk about the same product uh, supposedly if i talk about a product p1 i was paying around 10 rupees now i am spending 12 rupees for the same right so the it has increased by plus 2 so this these has to get reflected over into my price per unit because if that is increasing that means definitely you are spending more right it is not because of the fact like the customer is spending in terms of they're buying more into categories they're more engaged basically driven of the fact that your average price has gone up so price per unit and we will have something called unit per visit like number of units you are buying like if you are initially buying say 5 kg of something now you have increased it to 7 kg right it is that you are buying more unit here so more unit is something that we always desire so if it is plus 2 kg obviously plus 2 into the price per unit of that right that is something that you are going to pay excess in terms of the spend per visit right so this is something that you want that you, you buy more number of units you buy more number of categories that will ideally should get reflected here but average price is it's to be controlled by the inflation so if the if the prices is going uh, up and down so necessarily that is also going to reflect your spend per visit so this is typically a kind of and you know we call it the main kpi of, of for any retail or uh, basically uh, you can call it retail and also it can be an e-commerce as well so they are what i call they call it a basket like spend per visit i'm talking about they will be calling it to be basket what you have in your basket right there is always another measure in the e-commerce domain what they call number of times you have looked into the shopping cart number of uh, times you have ordered from your cart right so those kind of metrics is always uh, will be there so anything anything related to the uh, anything related uh, to your shopping trip so number of time you have searched right the number because this is a sales level so all these kpis it comes out to be the into us uh, this is your sales or a business kpi right but uh, uh, e-commerce will also need to identify because this is something that uh, if your transaction has happened because in retail or in an in-store this is what you can measure right okay if i'm shopping here then and only uh, uh, this is what is going to happen but it can be uh, let me clear this part uh, now there can be cases like if you are visiting an e-commerce e site you are looking into actively to the product whether you are doing add to cart or not so doing add to cart is one of the uh, you know one of the measures like they try to see whether a customer has uh, you know visited and whether he has added a product into cart or not uh, how much time you have devoted to while scrolling down so how much time you have uh, devoted in terms of the scrolling down the uh, down the page uh, so that is also important for them like okay whether a customer was actively looking for the product or not second if you have uh, you know looked into the product you added to the cart but you have forgot the payment option right these are all the set of information suppose that if you talk of make my trip or if you talk about uh, go i view right they always have those set of information what what was the latest search you made uh, how many times you have met how many hotels uh, you try to look into it right so there will be a uh, number of times you want to you know you, you check the different hotels you, you probably that the uh, way you are uh, you know the way you have uh, uh, the, there's something called a wave crawling the wave scrapping that we talk about right so how you are moving down and uh, what the amount of time you're spending on the uh, on on particularly going uh, clicking how many hotels you have clicked into it what was the content like is it like you are reviewing more of the content is it something once you're going to the payment option uh, you're not paying is it like you're waiting for some promotion right so those bit of insights are are a sort of information for the e-commerce so typically uh, an in-store and an uh, in-store and an basically an uh, online version they will have a different measures but one it boils down to your sales figure so when sales this means uh, this part of it but for them also 
e-commerce we also try to make a move like okay uh, probably uh, if you have added a new product to your cart or a new range something and new kind of in pricing uh, are they attractive to the customer so it means how many traffickers web traffickers came into that they looked into actively so that will define the success so anything which measures the overall business performance or any success criteria will be called as a kpi or a key performance indicator are you good good with this right yeah surely perfect so let's take a uh, let's just get some water let's take a break for around uh, uh, you know 3 4 5 minutes then we will go yeah. on with the rest of the stuff what we have and we will see on the data as well later part like what we want to achieve out of this right and uh, we will not the intent will be we don't want to overload with things probably uh, these understanding are very important so yeah. we will try to you know as much of the details we will talk will will not overburden things and then we will take it uh, tomorrow then perfect yeah yes okay okay Just give me your own okay. Yeah, let's connect in five minutes. Okay. Thank
Hello. Hey, hi, Shurajit. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Mm, uh, left out. Mm. No, it's just not coming properly. Uh, can you see my screen here right now or yes. not? I can see your screen. You there in uh, Mumbai or uh, Bangalore or that? Sorry. Uh, where oh. you are located? Uh, Mumbai or Bangalore? You said that. I'm um, Pune. Mumbai, right? Pune. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you are from Accenture, right? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think Accenture have a very good unit in your uh, for analytics. I think these guys are doing very good in Bangalore and Mumbai, I believe. Yes, I have recently joined Accenture Analytics. Okay, I think uh, I think seven eight months back, so it was like uh, these guys said me that you have to uh, travel between Mumbai and uh, basically Bangalore. I said it will be difficult because they were managing with some ONGC the client, so. My specialization is more around the customer and I'm like uh, into the retail side of it, retail and CPG. So okay. in this case, it's like, you know, uh, they don't have a specific retail as a unit. So it can be any client can be signed and to work. Yeah. So, uh, that will plus, yeah. They say, but it's not like forcefully you have to travel it. Like in Pune, they don't have an analytics office. They have only ATCI offices and technical offices here. So when I was moved here, so I told them that I won't be able to like locate to any place you want. Traveling for a week or two is okay once in a while, but on regular basis that is not possible. So I usually work yeah. from home and at times like enough three, four months going for a day or a week is okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, because initially I think they had a client for Owen disabilities. So uh, okay. it was like I had total of five rounds, so we clear all kit. And last round, this guy said me, uh, I said if you're fixing it uh, to one place, I'll be fine. But from Bangalore, it's something that I was looking into. It. So all the conversation was based on that. Uh, then this guy said, "Nay, I think uh, we need to uh, because you have to travel to Mumbai." I said, "Then probably it will be very difficult for me to." And I think also uh, I walked into the more of the most of the captive, like I'm, the, I'm working with uh, currently with Nanambi, so it's a very, very captive analytic team. Uh, but particularly okay. with Accenture, so they are into more around this field. So now uh, the challenge is like the mindset is very different. So probably we do a end to end consulting kind of a thing because but here you will be whatever your client says. Uh, mm -hmm. When I asked about like, what about like uh, in terms of your rating and how the, how the uh, it's, it's code. Uh, I think uh, what I heard is about like whatever the client says, that will be taken as a Bible. I said that that is, yeah. that is something very difficult to because you know at the end of the day, it's what we felt out like uh, to me it's personally like okay you you have your uh, senior stakeholders in the business as well, so probably their view will all, all, all should matter. It's not that because. 
they are more of whatever client says uh, it's appropriately to be taken as uh, as a bible and i'm okay fine perfect uh, then i think you're other uh, i think they are they are very good in terms of the payment after they are really good and uh, uh, projects in the digital space i think they are they are really doing well there was a lot hiring for like people in essentially in essentially digital for these big data spark scala as python these skills it was a huge think, hiring yeah. they have that skill set they they are technically very low at this side of the things they are functionally yeah. very strong but yes. uh, if i say technically like i have started working with them i have those skills at but functionally i'm not strong so i they explain me everything like i want this thing to be done so i do codes for them and then do because it now when we do like previously data side sets they used to work our one was i think they were less people usually work on excel to do their analytics mm-hmm. but now the data set is very huge like i see when do like from one of the, our customer uber media uh, almost for a month data when i aggregated aggregated data comes in dbs 45 to 50 dbs of data when they do analytics on at least for a month they need to have it the data becomes too huge and it's really tough to process it in python or r and the tools right. just right. collapsed on big data because it's very difficult if, uh, yeah. so even like you know if you uh, you need this part of it for five spark like currently the way we work is like we have a data engineering team who actually uploads the databases whether it's like a uh, sql yeah. or basically uh, they manage the database side of it and using that part of it like we normally like if we we fetch from uh, normal uh, most of the business operation we use using the five spark but when it comes to the modeling side of it we try to make it one of the python so it's a combination of uh, most of the times like my 60 to 70% uh, in, into the python code this okay uh, later part like python if you run some if i talk about a clustering in an algorithm python will run way far because even you have a big data python will not manage to run that that is yeah. also one one of the challenge we seen in in the, in the python yeah here you usually like use i work on scala because in python uh, yeah. your voice is breaking mm-hmm. surely i'm not able to like listen properly okay yes. so uh yeah can you hear me now yeah now well, it's very yeah it's good now yeah it's basically here we uh, do so process basically you know it's, it's the same story every, mm-hmm. everywhere like yeah yeah that is that is one of the biggest even if you if you uh, see uh, pure analytic in terms of uh, i think uh, bit zs absolute data fractal also yeah these guys are purely into like you will have that consulting mind frame you will start working but whenever i see the cases with uh, bit infosys bit essential uh, they have a very kind of an okay this is a churn model uh, so like they talk in that language So I said, like, it's yeah. not that you can talk. This is a churn model, or an, you have to do. But it's basically, under business understanding part is something that I seen is not, uh, you know, because I think that is the part they are lacking. But they are more focused, like, okay, if we have to deploy one solution, this is what you need to do. It's not an end to end in that way. Um, what I observed while like it's been five six months, I've been moved in analytics side. So I've been I've been like managing leading the ideal part of it. I do ingest the data and then I do most of the aggregations like like how they want the data because the raw data is very huge. They no, I they don't need the whole data. I just reduced it and managed it like how they want it, aggregated it at the most levels they want it. for their analysis it becomes at least a small chunk so the people are what i see like people are not ready ready to accept the new skills what i feel is that even the people are from top colleges or whatever they matlab they are not ready to accept the new mm-hmm. technical side of the things they are more very much in right. business rights 
doing the things and what somebody has written a code five years back they are ready to go with that code not even trying to give a thought like why to go with the code that has been written five years back somebody wrote it there are so many new things come has come now why don't you try is, it now with the new things this is, this is what one of the challenge because i there were other student i had like uh she joined uh, essential so on a digital side of it so she said like in the same story like uh whatever we are doing but you know there are a lot of advanced things that we discuss but i think there they want to stick to uh you know this is what we have done in past i think the mindset had to get changed and but i believe uh few of the guys but they do have a very good phd one or two guys in at a vp level so the one who took my interview was a uh, this guy was on a phd into ai and some part of it and uh, he was really making sense and uh, we were discussing on a market mix model so accenture is known for market mix model so given a chance uh, they did does it really well like uh, uh, they have that kind of level of data Yeah. Actually, this is something I'm saying that have this is the seventy percent of people are with thirty percent people are there. They do new things. They are not aligned with things. But the most of the trend is this. I have seen with right. this. Uh, they have offered me like data science and something like this guy. I said, so what you are expecting to do? Like uh, basically from data science, it's like even you have very very good hands on on ML and you try with different algorithms. So will that get accepted? Uh, their view is like if the client is, it's all depend on the client. You know? That is not a way to look forward. Probably uh, somewhere everyone have their own viewpoints, and I think uh, they will also take some time in order to you know, uh, adjust to the mindset uh, with the trend with the overall industry. So things will happen, yeah. but yeah. It's, it's, now let me shut down. Okay, so we are a good uh, deal here, right? With it, sales yeah. and yeah, right. Uh, so what I will be doing is I will be showing you the data, what we have, and what we need to do, and uh, then what we intend to get as a final output, right? So basically, yeah. here you have to code, you have to do those part of it. Yeah. So now, if I say that, uh, let me, yes. So this will be the transactional data which I have talked about, right? Uh, I'm going to, but this is a very huge file, so probably I need to uh, upload it in a Google Drive. Uh, it will be some GB, like uh, it can be 20, 30 GB of data. Okay, okay, so, I'll download it. No issue. Yeah. So this will be the transactional data you have. So if the transactional data you have, you know, the household key. This will be your customer ID. This is your basket ID. Yeah, we have a day, like day one, two, something like that. But what we will be doing is, uh, you can upload. Uh, you you have to map that uh, day with date ID. Uh, okay. Just check the number of day we have. Uh, regarding we have a one year of data, so in the one year of data we will try to be the this year versus last year may not be possible. So we will do quarter wise, but ideally. If, uh, yeah. You hailed from Pune, or basically uh, when you moved into the? I moved here. I'm from North Delhi. Delhi, okay. So you have a lot many options in Delhi, though. Actually, my Delhi. husband is here, so we decided to move here. Okay. I mean, in Gurugram, I'm seeing like uh, too many. And analytics is yeah. After Bangalore, I think Gurugram is. Yeah, for like I was in technical before. Like I told you, now like five six months back, I was like pulled from technical to consulting side. I was working in technical and managing the serial everything. When I was leaving right. the company, they just stopped me and pulled me here. Don't leave it. Just do the same thing for us. We need you. <laughs> This was something. Uh, right. Uh, it's also the good part of it, right? Um, 
you'll enjoy that. I definitely know once you. Uh, yeah, like, so once I come came here, now, so I thought, let me also learn these things. <laughs> when I learn it, I can also ask them. Now I want to do this, do these things. I have a better understanding of it. Right. I mean, when you have the data, the so best part is like you can play around. Like that is only. And I think uh, in the industry, the very handful of the guys, uh, apart from the captive units, I'm talking, they know much on this part. So uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, what I've seen, like people do say absolute data or ZS and all, they uh, uh, they ask the relevant questions. Something what I was also interested, like Amazon, all Amazon does a really good thing. So if you talk about Amazon, Zomato, Swiggy, Uber. Right, uh, even Mitra, so they are a bit on the advanced side of the analytics where they actually apply uh, the high end machine learning as well as the AI part of it. Okay, so this is what, like, uh, I, I know, like, what data these people were on because this is the data used in just clean them and aggregate for them. So uh, the data understanding I have, the ones I am understanding, have understanding of this also. I'll try with our data, my data also. Like, I'll right, just um, discuss that data with you also. Like, what we can do with that. Scenarios and case studies I can make. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, more you because you're yeah, confused. I was saying like because the, there is a gap I see between technical and consulting people is that people are they are very much functional they have a very less technically and if you go with technical side people are very much technical they don't have any idea about the functional side of it. The, there is a gap. I will, in I will, I'll give you a quick example like uh, I was having an interview with PC and this guy is like uh, what is the model you have done and I was so like. Uh, even I'm into the like into the uh, interview panel of my company. I said like what a model it can be anything. So right, you cannot uh, no we want to then this guy say if I say random forest and all so and I'm okay random forest uh, then it went on to the discussion on the random forest. But what I've seen the basic difference is like the mindset. They are only uh, you know specialized for one or two things. Do you know this? Do you have that? That is basically they have a technical uh, acumen, so that is something a bit of challenge in there. Yeah. Now let's uh, let's look into the data. If you see the uh, you know, uh, um, I think we are here. We'll have this household ID, basket ID. So we need to yes. calculate the count of basket ID, right? What we are saying. You have a day. You have the product ID, quantity, sales, store ID, discount. Week number we can plot, uh, and I think yes, that is what. So if we go down here, um, you see that we have a product ID. You have got a manufacturer, that is a department, right? So this will be a hierarchy: department and commodity and a sub commodity, right? So within pastry, okay. this is a bread, and within a bread, this is a bread Italian French, right? In grocery okay. food shelf, so we have to get to this level, right? How things are there. So you have to map with the product ID. Uh, you have a product ID here, you have to map with the product ID and say roll it up a data to say total department level, how the sales is happening, and so on, right? This is something. Okay. Here we have a customer table, right? Here I think you have a age, you have a marital status, income distribution, house owner, you have we don't need to but so we'll have that household size kids category number of kids i believe so whenever you do behavioral segmentation you can do that and you have a household key here right so what we need to do is uh, we have to map with the household key with the transactional data to get a even a customer level so in the customer level what we will be requiring is the income group and say the age description right so Let's have yeah. the uh, income description and the uh, age uh, description from this and then back to the transactional table. Now, uh, I did a simple describe to see the count, mean, max, and so on. So, basically, you can use some of the statistical term uh, measures in terms of describe and mean, max, median, these kind of things. In the second part, you have the merging of the data set to create a master data. So, you have to 
map the data with respect to your you have to match the data in uh, with respect to your product id and everything and you see that we have the data uh, uh, produced at this level right so basically this, this will give us uh, once you are mapping it after matching the data then at the customer level you have to do a group by so basically and you have a data id as well so map the date time with a date id and so that uh, we can see for every month so if you can do that your voice is not coming shukri ji it's great to Have my audio lost or can you hear? No, I can hear. Voice is breaking, right? Yeah. So, just to replace the alarm. So let me show what I have. So, yeah, if you see in this part of it, like uh, I did it with a with a uh, you know review qu year quarter one and quarter two. right so i think the data will be for the 365 days it's basically for an one year data uh, in a one year data if you see that you have count of customers the count of baskets total sales spent per customer spent per basket and frequency of purchase right so what you have to produce is like from these data sets you have to because there is a no initial group by uh, group by you have to do you have to from the transactional data if someone tells you like what is the count of customers and the sum of sales so basically um, you have to do the count of basket id count of household key and sum of net sales value so this both these things should be and household key and if you get a total sales you know and definitely if you have to filter so you can write a function um uh, by which you can filter data for uh, supposedly by say uh can give you an example have a def i am just uh, pool kpi right uh, if i write a pool kpi and i give a uh, quarter um and year right as one of my variable right what do you need to do like based on a quarter like from the transaction uh data you're going to have you have to trans dot if you do it in spark like you will do it like the trans dot filter right so you have to filter the data based on that if i do if dot call that you are doing it for your quarter this uh quarter whatever that variable will be equal to say you have quarter here right and you put and condition year may you may or may not give right so once you are pulling your filtering the data based from this post that you need to do the data summarization and return the data set right so try write uh, try to write up uh, you know code which will be uh, doing this operation and finally uh, we are going to get something like this the quarter one customer basket sales and you can also calculate the derived matrix itself in the code like spend per customer spend per basket and frequency of purchase right is it clear right yeah the second part is like we need to roll the data at a department level so you have a you when you are joining with the data set so basically you will have the department level information as well right here so you need to do a summarization of the data post joining of the quarter 1 like what is the sales we are getting for sales customer visits whatever all this matrix uh, for the quarter 1 and whereas for the quarter 2 right so then we will get something like this a uh, business summary so if you see here this is my uh, raw data here right we are one and year two i compared so year one and year two is nothing but quarter 1 and quarter 2 the size of Uh, since we do have the data at one year, so we we'll try to make this part. Uh, then you have the for the year one, you will have this data sum of sales, customers, contribution, and for the year two also similarly we are going to have. What we need to see is absolute change what is happening and the total sales change. So this part will be doable based on the data that we have. 
Okay. You select uh, this will be your quarter one and this will be your quarter two. Right? Okay. So basically, you will have the data. We, we need to get the data at this level, like the difference of sales and everything. So this will be the part that we uh, that we can aim. This will be something that we can also discuss somewhere tomorrow, like a new retain how customers are living. So more around that. So once you get that, like during the period, you see that you know we can uh, develop something like this. Total sales customers year one and year two, you can see the differences and everything. So we, we will be aiming to do that. So try that in a code. We can produce an output something like this. Uh, okay, sure, Just in one Excel, just to show. Tell me yeah, the yeah, raw yeah. files and an output file. I'll code it out and like get it the one what we need it. Like that would yeah. be good. so basically this is yeah, absolutely. This is what we are trying. So this will be the uh, raw file that you have. Review okay. here, it can be quarter quarter one and quarter two. You have customer, mm -hmm. basket, sales, and quantity. From there, we are going to do the pivot and uh, come up to it. Right? Okay, this will be my raw data and so we have you have seen our it need to be in this format, yeah. Okay, we just just try the final output also. This is my raw data, and this is the output I want, so that I yes. can understand how, what we want. Exactly. I'll so this it is out. Raw data, and this will be my a uh, final output. What we are trying to see. So it's basically what we are trying to see uh, will be that you are taking insights. These are your major, uh, you know, major departments where you seeing chunk of your sales. The second part is like. Even in this chunk of uh, your department, this is where you are seeing the majority of the sales loss. So try with a department level, and also the similar output can be based on like you have also the data at a um, commodity and a sub commodity description, right? Do yeah. uh, repeat the same exercise at department cross commodity, department cross commodity, cross sub commodity. So this will give us the okay. master file. By which we can just write, uh, you know, every information will be there for you. So we will pick them uh, up and we will try to analyze the data from here. So, sub commodity. You got me, right? Okay. We want the data so on this one. And, and one and department, this. department plus commodity, department plus commodity plus sub commodity and pivot it, exactly. correct? Exactly. Perfect. From that raw data that you show raw me data. in Python. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you write the raw file name which I have to use it, or there is a sequence of files that needs to be used? Then I will give it to you. Like probably I will give you the snapshot of this transaction tables and all. I will I will, I will give this to you. Uh, this transaction yes. data and all. So it will be easy for you to. Okay. Use. Yeah. No. Uh, once I have an understanding of data and what is the output I need, na, in, what I need to do it, then I will do it in coding. That's no, not. No, yeah, probably what I will probably probably what I will do is I will share the desired output that we are looking and not exact yes. value, but this is what we are trying to get. I'll, I'll do yeah, that. Yeah. Probably yes. in the evening. Just, five, just share me as a raw table with five ten columns and the, what output needs to be derived from it. Then I'll use this final form, code it, and the same way I'll find an output form for that data. Hello. Perfect. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, this coding things I used to do. Madam, I don't feel Madam. Okay, so, there won't be an issue with me including the things. Just something is that I need to understand what I need, want to do. Exactly. Like, uh, right, right, right. Uh, as far as uh, like, coding will not be right. That is not an issue. Like I so used to. You're comfortable code. with the NumPy errors and all, right? right? Even. NumPy, no. I usually NumPy. I I mean vulgar numpy. I can't hear you. You I know you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. Numpy I, I think is a I, Python I, library, right? Didn't, didn't get you. This guy, your voice is breaking a bit. Uh, and now is it I'm audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. I'm saying that majorly I have worked on like Scala and PySpark. Uh, like on exec Python, I know it's somewhat similar to it, but from the programming point of view. 
Okay, okay. Probably even I am more comfortable in Pittsburgh, but I think uh, majority of the you know the majority of the section of people is more toward the Python. So I have to put that content in Python. Even that is also even I have to find out because normally the modeling is in Python, but uh, the rest of the data fetching I do in Pittsburgh. So when I have to, I'm looking into it. Okay, this will be the equivalent to it. Yeah, like I was thinking to do the data cleaning and joining and everything in Python. And once that is done, we can do modeling thing that can't be done in PySpark. That we will do it in Python. And like I was yeah. thinking like because this cleaning yeah, and everything, I know how to do it in like I in Python. And so I don't need like much help. Modeling and everything. No, 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 that makes sense. That makes sense. I need help like how they are then because i'm yeah, not involved absolutely. yeah that, that works okay okay that's great so we'll, we'll go that way i think that will be good enough so i probably i will try whatever i have in terms of the big i need to for the rest of the guys even who will be doing so i have to make this a bit python specific so i'll do that better that you pull it in pycebox and we'll look into that and uh, then probably the modeling bits we will be doing in python yeah that like that will be easy like these things can we can easily go out like they can right. be easily removed. yes yes okay yeah. i think uh, what we can do is now we can start a session tomorrow so probably i'll, I'll share that in the evening hours uh, with you so no, my voice is breaking really or me. can you hear me yeah just please something that i will have to fix uh, uh so oh, let's connect tomorrow then right okay hello uh, sure. i'm saying yeah, let's yeah. connect tomorrow then yeah yeah sure uh, surajit sure, just a minute just share these files with me on google i'll download it out and have a look at the data and i'll import it in my python shell in my PySpark environment, and let's have a look at it. The data and just um, I just need right. a sample file with five right. or in Excel. Just give me a sample file or write this, write it like what is the raw data and what you need from it. I'll do coding of it. That won't be an issue. No, I will do it. Definitely. Right. And like don't write code. I don't Absolutely. need that. So if I do it, <laughs> no, no, I know, I know, because uh, because it's very important. What do we need to be done? Perfect. I think uh, like, probably in the evening hours if I. Share that that will be good for you. Yeah, yeah. Just do share in the evening, and that is also okay. No issues with that. And Shurojit, well, just share that. some statistics material yeah. with me also. I just wanted to have a look. No, no, I, 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 will, I will do that. Okay. Yeah. What I will do is now I will try to create a repository in terms of the data set, in terms of uh, the email part of it, in terms of. Uh, uh, the statistical things because these codes once it get, uh, gets um, out into like we will have those codes as well as we will have those some of the snippets in terms of a proper TPT we're going to share that but probably that will take some time but whatever material in terms of statistics and machine learning things will be there that that I'm going to upload so that I can at least have a like have a look at them before the class the what the things are I right, can right. understand them very nice better perfect 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 okay. we will do it okay Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye.